So can we? Is okay if we delve back into the in the role play conversation then with Baron sure. Dioxin? Great. Yes. So he asks. Uh, so I'll just because there was a lot of discussion, I'll, I'll reboot things. He says, "I would like to extend this invita- invitation indefinitely. How would you like to come live here?" Um, it's an incredibly generous offer. Hmm. Uh, there are a few complications, of course. There always oh. are. Um, All right. Well, please, please air them out. Perhaps we can, you know, smooth out such complications. Well, we have a contract with uh, a, a freelance trader named Stephen Ward. We mm, okay. uh, pilot one of his ships and we do odd jobs for him. And <laughs> My we... goodness, you're very busy. Oh, yes. Well, we... We're trying to find a, um, well, a ship where we could place uh, items that understandably would get us in trouble. Mm, yes, secrecy. Yeah. Not of to course, mention you we're to very, very careful. we're very free spirited. We like to be able to go where we will, when we will. So having our own ship is is a high priority to us. And this contract was a good way to go about doing that. We, okay. Um, what, what what are the terms of this contract? Well, we pilot his ship for him, mm-hmm. and uh, about once a week, we see if he has any jobs for us to carry out. Other than that, mm-hmm. we kind of just uh, wander around and find ways to make money. Ah, I see. So, you, uh, oh, I didn't realize that you had your own ship, or I wouldn't have shuttled you over here, uh, but... Um, would you be amenable to the idea of of continuing to have your freedom? I'm not asking you to stay here indefinitely. I'm just extending an invitation. I'm not saying you should you can't leave. That's awful. But would you be willing to uh, still use this as a, for lack of a better word, a, a home away from home? A place to refuel your ship, perhaps. Get new supplies, get new information, new job contracts. I I do know a lot of people. I could probably help out with that. Al would look to the others. We may have talked about this out of character, but... <laughs> mm. uh, well. I'm, I'm not quite... Patrick will uh, probably pipe up. I'm not quite sure about contracts. Oh? Um, uh, yes, he wanted to make sure that, uh, he, um, that, that we were working for him and not for someone else. Ah, uh, an exclusivity. Hmm. Smart man. Hmm. Well, perhaps I could always buy out your contract, but at the mean part, you have a ship that you need to take care of. That isn't exactly your own, but you have some responsibilities for. Okay, I understand why you wouldn't want to back out on that. All right. I think that can be a... No, I think we can make arrangements for that, but you use the plural, concerns. Uh, what what else is... Uh, what what might make else make you hesitate? Well, let's play this out, shall we? You, so far, you've been a very kind and generous host. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be as forthcoming and blunt as I can. I hope you mm-hmm. will not take Good. offense to it. No. You are giving us an incredibly kind offer to stay here. Mm-hmm. It is clear and obvious that we have information that you deeply want. Um, exactly. Yes. What happens if we can't Let's not even say if we choose not to. Let's say that we decide we want to help you and we can't help you. What? Because uh, from my understanding of our private and public conversations, uh, this power is not within you to give, correct? Correct. You are attaining to some sort of entity, some sort of deity. Is this a god that you're dealing with? I've read such things. These demon lords so hard <laughs> I, I, I I I would not be able to say no I don't know enough about this thing to to I know that it is incredibly powerful so for all intents and purposes it absolutely could be I see. All, mm-hmm. all I remember is back when we found this staff that this 
being was interested in it this temple his visage was all over the inside in carvings he was worshipped as a god i see so i could understand then your hesitation what do yeah. you say to god how you cannot convince god to do something he does not want to do correct yes so all right let's play out the worst circumstance you appease your god to ask him for a favor for me he for whatever reason says no and as a god he cannot be convinced otherwise are you concerned that i would kill you out of spite no i wouldn't insult you that much mm -hmm. uh i think a better the way favors would end to be honest with you um it would be a poor investment if nothing if there was no way of paying uh, of getting any sort of reward for my efforts you would be um i would continue to be a source a resource perhaps even a potential ally depending on how our business relationship goes but uh, if you're asking if you would still get free room and board i would probably say no of course i understand i just uh you are a very driven man and it, you, there are few things in this world more important than one's own life. So we are very cautious, but only because... You're intelligent. You know that a person with this amount of power did not gain that so very easily. This wasn't given to me. It was earned. And you know the dangers of dealing with powerful men. Al not yep. extremely so. Good. <clears throat> it is refreshing to know that individuals have sober minds coming into an arrangement. But that is how, what I'm proposing, an arrangement that is mutually beneficial. There's something that I want that you have and something that I have that you want. And as long as we allowed that to happen, we can both be very happy. But the second you can no, pr no longer provide for me what I want, then I no longer provide for you what you want. Very simple. And that is something that I can certainly respect. If it's any consolation to you, I want you to know as far as a personal philosophy of mine is that I don't tend to burn bridges. It's a foolish thing that most people do. I only burn bridges if, to, part, to continue the metaphor, if the bridge is rotten and unstable, then I burn it and rebuild it another one someplace else. But as a tendency, I mean, my organization is called the network. Networks don't stand alone. They are completely dependent on the interaction of other indiv individuals. Well, then I think that your offer is using this place as a, well, a, a home base, uh, a place to stop and catch our breath would mm -hmm. be most grateful. Then I only have one at last request for you. Would you, let's, let's go on with what, what we were discussing before. I'll be equally blunt and forthcoming. You are an investment to me. That is why I'm offering you all this, this graciousness is because I see something within you that I want. Right Now, I would feel very upset if my investment to, were to go off and be blown up by a bunch of pirates or be mugged and killed on Outcast Station or any other such unforeseeable uh, of unforeseeable events. Now, I agree, I can't control all the mechanisms of the universe, but I do want to make sure you are safe and protected. Would you be, would you accept my protection? Well, what exactly does that entail? Well, <clears throat> various ways. Say, for example, you are on your ship, for example. What, well, what's the name of your ship that uh, you, you're under contract with? 
the Twilight Covenant. Okay. So say the Twilight Covenant uh, is doing, um, I don't know what you'd be doing, um, a data transfer, right? Between Euro Station and Freedom Station, say, right? A simple packet, information packet transfer between these two vast areas. And say we know you're going to go through, say, the Orn region of space, a space that's known to have a lot of pirates. I would then suggest giving you an escort of some of my ships to deter any sort of attack. Say you have business that you must do on Outcast Station. It's no surprise that I have agents, employees, people who work for me or who people who work with me on Outcast Station. I would ensure they would keep their eyes on you and make sure that the gangs don't mess with you. That sort of protection. The protection that true power can offer. I see. Um, honestly, I'm taken a bit aback by this. Uh, we've spent so long protecting ourselves. I'm not sure I even... I don't know. It's a very kind offer again, of course. And I, of course... This is this is just really new to us. I understand. I imagine everything is new to you. How about this, then? <clears throat> I will make arrangements. I will we'll take the, the shuttle that you came on. Yes, the Silent Heart. Uh, my, my, my... My employee, Nocturne, shall escort you back to Outcast Station. You'll gather up your possessions, gather up your ship, the Twilight Covenant, and return here. Unload everything you have, make this place your home, and then, and then we'll discuss further options. I think... That's a fair way to go about doing it. Yes. Out of character. Yes. I'm good with this. <laughs> Piff, are you good with that? Piff? He's thinking. Oh, no, he's muted. Never mind. I believe so. The Baron's um... already muted one of us. No. <laughs> And do that. You will be silenced. <laughs> he casts magic net on you. You're uh, the one that opposes me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, if you were saying, sorry. <clears throat> so um, I do declare that uh, that should be fine since everyone kind of is on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, at least for at, at the moment it seems um, yeah Groovy. okay well then let me use the washroom and uh, we'll we'll start continuing on with the, the campaign here all right oh boy <laughs> oh boy this is cool <laughs> yeah um, we were looking for a safe place. Well, <laughs> yeah, as long yeah, I mean, like I said, as long as we can come and go as we please, I like the idea. I really do. Yeah. Um, I but do. so by the way, Al's gonna want to convince you guys to go to an ancient graveyard space station. I figured as much. I know it's kind Which of as one, a big Brady? surprise. <laughs> You'll never guess it. <laughs> Is it some sort of Asian descent? <laughs> oh my god. Station. How did you ever? <laughs> Maybe it was some sort of Japan emission or something of the sort. Hundreds of thousands of miles away. He's still thinking about poor little Mori. Who what? I said he's hundreds oh, of thousands of miles wow. away. He's still thinking of poor little Mori. Yeah, that's why I was oh, doing I that. I didn't even make that connection. Whoa. Well, that's kind of the point. This is supposed to be kind of the, you know, it's burning in the back of his mind the whole time, you know? Yeah. 
because I think for him more than anything, because it looks to him. Of course, this is just to to uh, idealist Al that Lee has completely given up on it, and he wants to show that there's there's reason to like. He thinks that's a part of the reason why Lee has such a cynical view on everything. And uh, you know, maybe he can, you know, and also, you know, help the poor girl. That's a, probably a big part of it too. Yeah. What about the girl <laughs> squee? <laughs> That's selfish. Probably a part of it. God. I. See, I this honestly... how you're supposed to do it, Lee. And throws him in his face. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about, poor Lee? <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about um, Al wanting them to go to a, a, a graveyard, and then I mentioned you know he's hundreds of thousands of miles away, and still thinking of poor Morin, and, and Bern was like, "Oh, that's why." <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like, "I was like, yeah, for Al, he'd like to be able to show Lee that there's reason to still believe in the world, and you know, and help the girl. That's good too." <laughs> Nice. <laughs> that would be hilarious. You did it wrong, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> this how you're supposed to do it, Lee. <laughs> Who's acting like a child now? <laughs> you? <laughs> what? <Yeah>. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Let's continue on. I'm I'm willing to put this in a more narrative space if you guys are now too, rather sure. than role playing moment by moment. Oh yeah. So you finish your yourself up with the with the with Baron Dioxin, um, uh, after reaching this agreement, <clears throat> and after uh, a little while, after things get cleaned up or whatnot, he uh, you are once again escorted to the um, the long long walk towards the uh, docking bay of the Inside Joke. Mm -hmm. In which the same shuttle that you arrived in, called I think I called the the um I mispronounced the name of the little shuttle ship. What's its name? Oh, it's called the Hon Honest Heart, not the I think I called it the Bleeding Heart or something like that. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, but the Honest Heart, the Honest Heart. Uh, once again, this very posh shuttle vehicle. Um, takes you back to Ocast Station. Okay. Uh, so, um, what are we going to... Because uh, there, there's a scene I want to role play, but I want to also get a bunch of stuff out of the mind. I, I, mind. So what, what, what you got here for me, Piff? I got, I got two things, because I keep... I keep forgetting or something, but mm -hmm. I wanted to note that man that was on the station who wanted a good word. I was meaning to do that. Oh, Scyther. <laughs> yeah. Scyther. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can definitely yeah. do that in retro, uh, retro specs for sure. For sure. That's <gasps> awfully nice of you. What's the other one? And uh, um, I guess he's just holding a fairly large box in front of him. Yes, that's well, it would be. Yeah, actually, it is. It's, <laughs> it's a large, large case. Uh, that's taken with you. Yeah, that has the the red carpet um, plants in it. Yeah, what's up, Burn? Um, we have something for when we actually get to Outcast, and that is to ask August if he wants to stay at Outcast or come with us. Yeah. Um. About. Well, maybe we should just role play it at the at at the time. Oh, sorry. Well. Yeah. What, what did Piff want to say? I wanted to talk with Tyrath first. And then, like, if we're not going to live there, then we can, you know, have that all aside. But if he's all uh, willing, yeah, we can tell August. Yeah. The thing is, if August does go there and the thing doesn't fall all the way through, I don't know how he, August can definitely be the bother mouth. I mean, but the, how, okay, here's a question How much does August know? And, that, and this is an honest question. He has seen him and know his name. That is yep. true. That is true. Yeah. Um, no, no, let's say let's say this all this all we're we're going along to plan. I honestly think that we should offer August the option of like, look, August, um, do you just want to stay there? Yeah, because honestly, um, out of character, I would like the I I like the idea, even though my character doesn't really like him. <laughs> um, I like the idea of keeping August there so that we can possibly try and find these aliens, because we want we want to possibly find Zoot. Oh, I meant um, stay on the ship that is much better living conditions than 
Outcast Station. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking of August. Kind of... Yeah, I was thinking of August. Poor August. Yeah. Poor. Because dude, yeah. uh, August doesn't leave his room. That's true. And he's going to have a very nice room that he likes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess. But um, he he won't have the cat and mouse game anymore that he has on Outcast. Uh, that's possible. True. So maybe he'd want to stay. But I mean, I think that this is, this should be assuming that we don't have to worry about him being a huge blathermouth. I think that we should oh, just yeah. lay the option before him, and and, Let's and let talk him choose. To Tyrath first. Yes, so Tyrath. yes, yes. Know that there is an option for him. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, let's I... Have, okay, okay. So how about this? Because you're not going to be talking to Tyrath of Hif, even though it's mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to do that while you're. No, inside his necklace is summer. not even on him. Oh, that you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Okay, so yeah. how about this? Let's 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 just take it through a step at a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Time speed the the fourteen hours or so uh, for you guys to get back to Outcast Station. All right, mm -hmm. you're back at Outcast Station. The once again the shuttle does not dock in the main shuttle bay, uh, the only docking port that Outcast Station has. Instead, it does it to uh, an exterior. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we're also say narratively speaking, the exterior of the ship, this exterior airlock, is still close. To the docking area where your, where the Twilight Covenant lies. Okay. Um, we're also going to say that <clears throat> if you choose, and a, a character can um, go to the, can access the link. Any character that can access the link, they can uh, access. Outcast link station and send a message or like uh, apply a message board for sign in to meet them by the docking bay itself, right? So now you got your guide and you got your ship, right? So far, does this sound decent so far? Just to kind of move things yeah. along? Uh, yeah, okay. only can can, uh, can Al have taken a bottle of that flavored sure. water? Yeah. All right, then oh, yeah, it's all yeah. yours. Awesome. Okay. Because I'm just doing step by step to kind of just gloss over the mundane parts, right? So we can get to the the, the meat of the role play. Okay. Right. Okay. So your uh, so we're gonna say you're simple. Simply enough, you have to wait around the docks for about forty minutes or so before Simon would be able to show up. Okay. So is there anything you want to? Um, oh yeah, here's the role play scene. I just realized. Okay. So uh, it was very fortuitous that you arrived at the docking bay as you did because when you go to check on your ship, the Twilight Covenant, you see um, a, a mutant worker stick a big red stamp with a star on it on the, on the nose of your ship. Uh, okay, then. Um, mm -hmm. what? Excuse me, sir. No, uh, what, what, buddy? Uh, hi. That happens mm. to be our ship. Did we do something wrong? Oh, no, no, no. I just marked this. So if you don't pay your docking fee in an hour, we're going to eject your ship. Right. That would constitute as doing something wrong. Uh, what's the docking okay. fee? Okay. Uh, he kind of scratches his nose. He goes away. That's not for me. I'm just here for the stamp. Uh, you want to go talk to... And you, he points over to the um, easterly direction, and uh, he says, uh, you want to go talk to uh, Nemo over there. And he points over to past a huge crowd, a clutch of mutated individuals, until you see uh, a, f a fellow... Um, who is whew, probably one of the tallest and skinniest people you've ever seen. Well, no, that's not true. You've seen pretty tall shit. He's about seven feet tall and rail thin. Uh, he's almost like a walking skeleton in how bony and how narrow he is, although his face is not skeletal at all. All right. But he dresses in this long, beaten up, tattered red jacket. And uh, the, the mutant that was had the stickers there, he points to the tall fellow who's kind of sitting um, at this kind of very makeshift metal table. And there's just a, 
a group of mutants just around him, yelling at him, waving um, cards in the air and as he's sorting through everything. He goes, yeah, you want to go talk to Nemo over there? He, he takes care of uh, docking fees. Oh, well, thank you. Keep uh, you're doing a fine job. Just keep stamping. Those yeah, noses. go slag yourself, you fucking freebooter piece of shit. As he mutters and goes off. Al How rude. Al nods. Yeah. Well, all right. What would you guys like to do? I want to go talk to Nemo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, well, you approach the desk, too. And the, the closer you approach, the more crowded and crowded it becomes. And you hear things such as, ah, oh, come on. Last week, I got to pay 7K rations, and they were fine. And you hear just this uh, low, rumbling voice saying, The prices have changed. I'm sorry. The rogues need to feed more people. Docking fee is now 12K rations. And there's a bunch of curses and fighting. And uh, there's actually a threat of violence before uh, Nemo keeps an eye at the, the most vocal and verbally aggressive individual. And in a blink of an eye, this uh, complainer, for lack of a better word, kind of clutches his head and screams a blood-curdling scream before he eventually slinks away, creating a hole around the around the table in which you folks can step through too oh joy can yeah. i just <laughs> mm-hmm. uh al would uh step up and say um i'm sorry i uh, was told to speak to you about a docking fee yeah what's um what ship uh that one over there the twilight covenant <laughs> oh yeah it's been here for two days yeah well, you, uh, no, oh, yeah, docking fee. Okay, uh, what do you got, huh? Fuel, food? Uh, would, would ice work? Ox, ice. <sighs> are we talking about, uh, something on the card, or are we talking about tangible, actual ice? Um, we're talking about on the card. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck, just a second, he says, and you see him kind of reach down underneath the desk, and he pulls out this laminated card, and it looks like it's a graph. Uh, and he, he puts one finger on the, t- the x-axis, and one finger on the y-axis, and his long fingers kind of eventually intersect, and he goes, ah, Okay. Uh, he looks at you carefully and he says, "Do you have any affiliations?" Yeah, we're employees of uh, Stephen Ward. Ward, Ward, Ward is a Ward member of the Solar Rogues. I don't think so. Gotcha. You freebooters. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> he pauses for a moment. Takes the laminated card, laminated card off the table. Goes, he's going through his things. He takes out another one. This one is a different color. Once again, one finger goes, finds the y-axis, the other the x-axis. And by the way, all, all around you, people are shouting for his attention this entire time. <laughs> he's ignoring them. He just, uh, okay. Two days, 3,000 ice a day. You owe me for two, so that's 6,000 ice. How much longer you're saying? I see you have. You can have a three-day window for 15,000 ice, or you can stay here for a week for 40,000. Um, we're, looks at you dreamily. We're actually planning on leaving within the next few hours. You have two hours, then, until your ship is jettisoned. Let's, um... Is there any way to pay for one extra day, or is it just the three-day window? Three days for 15000 Let's just be safe. Unless you have food instead. These are our ice charts. 
Right. Uh, and Al will look to Tom. Maybe we should just play it on the safe side. I'm sure Ward would be rather miffed. Yeah. Yeah, he would. Um, <laughs> here. Um, I love you, Nemo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just, I'm visualizing this guy and I'm loving him. Anyways, I'll shut up. Al, you're you're in my card alone. Will be more than enough. Yeah. All right. So we'll give him fifteen thousand dice. So uh, right. once again, the two cards are put together. The money is transferred, and he goes, one moment. And uh, he looks at an individual who has crossed the line and has started to climb onto his desk to get his attention. Looks at him once again very similarly. Head clutches. The person shivers a little bit. They give a scream, and they fall off the desk. He puts the placard, the laminated card away, and he gives you a yellow sticker. He says, put that on top of the red sticker, please. Thank you. Yep. Please Have enjoy nice everything day. that Outcast Station has given you. I uh, can offer to you if you require a suggestion. Uh, I will. I can provide where you might want to go. I I think we're good. Thank you. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. And he quickly is goes to the next individual, screaming for his attention. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. So sticker on the ship. Yep. <laughs> Good call. Um, Al, your card only has 60 ice on it. Woohoo! I'm in Mine has money. 500. I'm in the money. Yeah. Um, so we place the sticker on and we either wait for sign in or go straight to. What, what do we want to do? Wait for sign in? Right? Are you, are you asking like other players? I'm, I'm good asking with, yeah. everybody. Yeah. I don't I'm, remember what our next I, step is. I'm good just waiting for. I well, um, I'm good waiting for sign in unless Inferno has any other role plays or anything. No, 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 that's understandable. If we had any role plays, I would throw them in. I don't at the moment. So after the whole sticker debacle, we'll say about thirty minutes will pass, and sign in will show up, and you'll be able to meet with them, and he'll be mm -hmm. able to guide you. Um, to to where you need to go. So where would you guys like to go? Um. Well, I know where I would want to go, but I, I if I recall correctly, we would want to go to Tiny Little Stars to get all of our stuff. Yeah, I, I think, okay, here's what I think we should do. Uh, because we kind of need to talk to Tyrath before August. So I say we go to Tiny Little Stars, get our stuff, go to the Twilight Covenant, contact Tyrath on our ship, because it's going to be the most secure place we have. Then contact August and we'll know what to do from there. As long as we lock the door, yeah, sure. Yeah. I can do that. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, hmm? technically there is um, already a place that we can do. So uh, the, the golden room is pretty secure. <laughs> Considering it's in a dimensional pocket, I would have to agree. Yeah. I wholeheartedly Contact. concur with that. Unless one of you are bugged. <laughs> no. No, we're not. Um actually I have an idea. While while the Twilight Covenant is docked, is there gravity? On it? Uh, on uh on no. The Twilight Covenant. Uh yes. Yes, if it's in the docking bay, yes. If it was outside, just clutching onto the outcast station, no. But yeah, okay. we're going to say for the sake of simplicity, the, the gravity generators that are just churning and humming in outcast station do extend to the interior environments of the ship. Unless you completely... No, even if you seal them, it's gravity. So yes, yes, it has gravity. All right. So my idea would be um, get all of our stuff, get Hannibal into a crate... Unless you guys don't want to do that, we can all, all just leave Hannibal there for now. Um, get Hannibal, Hannibal into a crate. Get him and try and make sure that he doesn't make too much noise. Get him, all of our stuff, back to the Twilight Covenant. Lock up. Um, have Bear, Alicia, and Mila, because she is here. Um, <laughs> just watch our stuff for now. The three of us go into the Golden Room, and we contact Tyra. How does that sound? Good. Uh, um, I have I a it. slightly better, or not better, different idea. 
Go for it. Um, how about we, because obviously there's going to be the large risk of getting Hannibal from where he is to where our Twilight ship is. Oh, wait. Um, yeah. We're going to the Golden Room anyway. What if we just put a decent amount of food and water in the Golden Room? Um, and, of course, this would be have to be Patrick's call, too. Put Hannibal in there, and then we don't have to worry about people finding him while we transport him. Um, you're talking about using the Golden Room in the Tiny Little Stars? I mean, I mean, I understand there's risk to that, too. It's more of a question of which one's riskier. Well, in, in our room in the Tiny Little Stars, is the door able to be, like, barred? <laughs> no, no. There's no door. There's no door. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> I used the bathroom multiple times, though yeah. it'd be very weird to have all of us go in at once. <laughs> you think well, how small it is. Pat Patrick and well, Hannibal in the in the bathroom. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, yeah. Since since Patrick's really the only one that can contact uh, Tyrath at one, like we can only have one person contact him at a time. We can't all be in that conversation. So why not have Patrick take Hannibal? into the, the golden room. Obviously, make sure Hannibal has enough food and stuff to last for a day. Maybe put him in the kennel so he doesn't tear up our golden room. Um, <laughs> and yeah. then and then the next day, as soon as we can, we pull Hannibal back out of there safely on our ship. Yeah, I, I like that idea. It's just... Are we going to do that with Patrick going into the bathroom with Hannibal and then coming out without Hannibal? Or, like, are we going to try and find something to oh my God. bar the door? What happened to Hannibal? <laughs> you don't know what, what you've seen. <laughs> it's like a little kid. Like, may, maybe find a mattress and just prop the mattress against the door. If there are mattresses. Wait, well, well, one of us could just stand by the door. Room's taken. <laughs> 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 fifth <laughs> down. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, is it a viable option? Well, I like to think your characters are discussing this while signing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Here's the thing. I think that having a few people in the orphanage wondering what just happened is better than the wrong people finding Hannibal on our way to the Twilight Covenant. As long as they don't end up tearing the bag. Huh? The 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 bag. The the, the bag thing that, that was, makes it all like, the teleporties who, into who who, yeah. who who would tear the bag? The the people at the tiny little stars? What okay. Ha Patrick and Hannibal go into a bathroom. I'm, Patrick I'm comes out without Hannibal. Why would they suddenly think let's tear bag? I don't know. <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna say no, that, that that's true. such a you low risk that I'm not. You too don't. Concerned. You don't know what anybody's gonna do, but I yeah, mean, that's true. But I mean, they could just pull out guns and shoot us, and then we're dead anyway. So I mean, like I, I'm, I'm thinking risk prevention here. I don't. I think the there is less risk in having a few people if they do wonder, hey, what just happened there, than say a I, bang. I almost think we kind of need to do it in the in the room though. Because if we if we take Hannibal into the bathroom and Patrick goes into the bathroom, all right, good. Fine. Um thing is we're not going to have his kennel. We're not really going to have any food or anything with him. It's just going to be I mean, he has the ice orb in the I can give oh, him water. <laughs> you can give him water, but no food. Okay, well, wait, why can't we take the kennel and the food in with them? It's a tiny little bathroom. The way that it was described was it's basically like a porta potty. A potty. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It's fucking tiny. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's, um, okay, what we'll do is we'll just go to the room. We'll stay there for a few minutes. We'll wait until no one's really, like, we'll, we'll get everything together. Like, you know, Hannibal, the, the, the kennel, everything together. Patrick's, like, sitting on the kennel. And then when we're pretty confident we've got some private time, boom. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because no, I, I, I was not thinking about how small the, the, the bathroom yeah. is and uh, bringing the whole kennel in there. You, why are you bringing the kennel in the bathroom? I got to go. <laughs> I have to say, out of all the things I've ever described, I'm really glad that you guys remember the description of that bathroom and the bright little stars refuge. Yeah. 
that bathroom was horrible. Yeah, that's hard to forget, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Simon guides you to the bright little stars, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, when you're about, when you can see the entrance and you're making your way there, you do hear a few surprise shouts, and you do see uh, one fellow. He appears to be um, some form of mutant. He's uh, lean and lanky, and he has a third arm jutting out from where his stomach is. And um, that's pretty much uncovered. His shirt is lifted up to give purchase to this, to this arm. And this third vestigial arm seems to be clutching a bag of something or, or, or some sort of items that are bundled up very close to his chest. Uh, he pushes past you so quickly, you can't really determine exactly what he has. Uh, but uh, unless you guys choose to interfere with him, uh, he kind of takes a look behind him back to the entrance there, and he's he's trying to push his way past you. And the hallway is just wide enough for him to get by without requiring any sort of physical contact with you. But he seems to be in a hurry. His face seems flushed. He's not making any sort of eye contact with you. Um, I don't. I I can't think of any reason to stop him. I, okay. Honestly. Yeah, I really can't. I mean. It'd be really weird to be like, just, hey. <laughs> okay. Well, what was the sound that we heard? Uh, it sounded like... Uh, I would like everyone to roll me a D100, please. All right. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. You all rolled very, very well. Uh, the uh, It was actually two sounds in very close succession. One was a high yell, almost like it was a surprised yell. And then the other one was, uh, it sounded like a shout. Um, and it does, you actually are all rolled high enough to actually hear the words, which is, oh no, he's not moving. Oh. Oh. Well, in that case. Mm hmm. So, if I understand correctly, we mm -hmm. heard shouts from the direction this man's coming from. Oh, no, yes. he's not moving, and there's a man yes. running. Yes. Trying to run past you, clutching something in his arm. Oh, boy. Al would like to trip him. I would like you to roll to strike, please. It'll be the equivalent of a called shot, but no penalties. Got it. Uh, hang on, it's been so long since Al's had to strike. Uh, so long. Like, you know, at least two sessions. Um, to say last, yeah, I guess. Which actually is not that much. Where's my, no. there it is. This is the very end of the second session, yeah. too. When you tried to, <laughs> well, that was a more roll to throw. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm saying like melee strike. Yeah, melee striking. Um, yeah. He doesn't have knives, so... Okay. <clears throat> he, he, unless he can find a way to trip someone with knives, that'd be a cool feat. <laughs> All right. Ten. Okay. So, you... Um, so, what I'm going to say is that you're, you you stick out your leg, mm -hmm. right? And you go to trip. If you got a, um, a called shot, you would have hit him just perfectly, which pretty much he would have to. Because he was rushing and everything like that, he would fail. But because you still make contact with him, right? You mm -hmm. did roll a 10. But he's going to get a chance to catch his balance, for lack of a better word. <clears throat> he does. Wow. So uh, you, you, uh, you try to trip him. Uh, he stumbles quite a bit, a few feet past you, Al. Now he's going to where uh, he's pretty much beside you now, Patrick. Uh, and you hear him give a curse, but he doesn't stop his momentum. He, he can he he's continuing on his path. Can can we use this time to try or at least Al try and get can, a better idea of what he's carrying? I think what we should do, if all of you choose to act in this very limited time window, I think we should roll for initiative. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, is this? Roll for initiative. Hey, attend again. 
Must love that number. Oh my goodness, caps lock. There we go. There, Mela. Thank you. Okay, so now for me to roll for my guys. Hey. Okay. Wow. Hey, okay, Bear. Let's see what you got. Show me what you got. Okay. And Alicia. I didn't forget about you this time, Alicia. Hey, lucky number 13 for everybody. Oh, God. And you know what? I'm not looking over af after the PP of uh, physical prowess of <sighs> all these guys. Um, I'm going to say Bear is faster than the Thug. No, I'm going to say Bear and Alicia are a little bit faster than both of them. So I'm going to start moving them. Oh, yeah, Al, you can have your six attacks now. You're no longer stunned. Oh, yeah. All right, it looks like you got it. Okay, I'll wait you to do that. Then I'll move Bear up. And Miss Alicia up. <clears throat> okay. So let's let's make let's once again let's visualize this hallway. Okay. Something a little bit clearer. Freehand black line. Alright, so Say this is the hallway, right? Much wider than the other one. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. So we're going to say Al is at the front. We're going to say Patrick. Actually, a ranger. We kind of had Al act first, so unfortunately he's going to have to be at the front. Okay? Okay. Um, I'm going to use a generic token for sign-in. We're going to say, well, we're going to say August is sign-in. Okay? <laughs> um, Mila has fallen asleep. I'm not rolling her initiative. <laughs> she's, she's, she's leaning against the corner going like, <laughs> for some reason, Bear will be nearby here. That makes sense, right? Alicia's there, and August's token, for the sake of simplicity, will be sign-in for now. So I don't spend time making a new token for the guy. Uh, but Burn, Patrick, uh, and you can arrange sign-in and Alicia however you guys want. I am good with this. In a flying okay. V. Yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> okay, let me just get... I think I still have a thug... Uh, generic thug um, token. Oh, I just came across Nathan's token. It made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, we'll use the old Lee token. He looks pretty rough. Rough. Okay, so that'll be him. He's kind of, he's just moving past Dial. He's going to be around here. He's trying to squeeze past Simon at this point. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, of course, I'm not going to say. We're going to start at the top of the initiative. Oh, wait. I'm going to answer Squeeze question real quick. Uh, does it look like, uh, Al, I would like you to roll me a D100, please. Okay, so you can't see the bulk of the package. His arm and his angle is in the wrong way. However, you do definitely see one object. It seems to be coming from the package that's trailing down past his hip and kind of hanging by his side. You could swear that looks like medical tubing. Oh. Okay, Patrick. What would you like Patrick to do? Um, uh, he will try to stop him and, okay. and he will probably yell out something like, wait, what happened? And he's most likely, uh, well, actually, will he try to stop him? Uh, maybe not physically. No, he's just going to say, wait, what happened? And then try to inspect what he's holding. I would like you to roll me a D100, please. Okay. Ah, Patrick. It's pretty clear uh, through his hands and despite his speed, perhaps the trip is what slowed him down. You could really get a good shot at what, what is in this guy's hand or uh, what is, is in this guy's arm. It looks like a, a bundle of objects. Uh, looks like a combination of gauze, 
blood bags. Uh, you recognize a lot of this stuff as like equipment that Al would would use. Um, you don't know if this is particular Al's equipment. You're not too sure about that, but um, the medical supplies are very, very similar. And if, in addition, it looks like uh, at the very bottom of this of this clutch of goods that he's carrying, also seems to be a lot of dried fruits as well. Huh. Yeah. So Bear is um, he's turning. He was he was trying to wake. He's oh, he's trying to like playfully like nudge not playfully but gently nudge Mila awake during this period, and so all he is able to do is turn. Like, he he hears the commotion and tears it. He uh, he hears the commotion and he instinctively just kind of moves the big bulk of his body kind of on an intercept path of this guy. But that's his action. Uh, Alicia doesn't really know what's going on either. Oh, well, wait a second. Alicia's not fucking stupid. She saw Al try to trip him. Give me a moment. I'm doing a 50-50 here. Uh, let me just figure out which 50% I want her to do what. Okay. So... She's not going to go straight up and engage the guy. It was a 50-50 chance of her just trying to punch this guy in the face. <laughs> but instead, she is going to do very similar to Bear. And she is going to just try to block his exit this way. So getting in between where Bear and the sleeping Mila is, they've now pretty much created a, a wall of individuals to kind of prevent his escape down this way. Okay? Uh... This thug is not stupid. He he recovers from a, his trip. He see he sees what's going on. He's concerned, and he's going to start to try to dart the other way. He probably makes it maybe about ten feet or so. Al. Um, Al will. Mm, can Al get in front of him? Uh, well, what's your... Oh, this is what I love about speed values. What's your speed value? 21. Oh, goodness, that's pretty fast. This guy's fast, but not as fast. You beat him by about five. So you go about five feet faster than him, but you're at a standstill, and he's kind of moving still. Now, he's not moving very fast because he had to stop where he's going and turn around and go. Mm -hmm. So he's not moving very fast. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do an opposed D20 roll, right? So I want you to roll 1D20 and add 5 for the differences in speed, and he's going to just roll a 1D20. If you win, well, we'll find out. <laughs> nope, you were just not able to. What is the um, tens? I don't know, but they love you. So unfortunately, you <clears throat> you go to try and get in front of him, and uh, you you miss him by a little bit. You're going to be about, well, we'll say nice and even, a nice even about five feet behind him. Okay. Oh wait, he can't move. It's not his turn. It's just. You get about five feet directly behind him. Well, you can be behind him or beside him. I'll give you the option. I'll say beside him. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's your action. Tom. Well, um I hmm. I, I could be really dirty. <laughs> uh, shower? Yeah. Yeah, Burton. <laughs> Sign in is like, no, my nose isn't used for that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I could force him to turn around again. No. You just do what you think your character would do, homie. No. I have to try and chase after this guy. Okay. But what my is... speed value is really bad. Well, what is it? 15. It's not that bad. No, it's it's actually his spoiler alert. It's his speed value. Well, actually, yeah, his right. is sixteen. It's a little bit higher, but still, it's very, very, very close. Um, that's not to say I would be. I would say you'd be able to get. Well, why don't we do an opposed roll again? Let's do the same thing, right? We're gonna just roll a d twenty. I'm gonna add a plus one. Sure. Let's see what we got. I got seventeen. Let's see what you got. 
Okay. Six. So all you're going to be able to do to catch up behind them is get right behind them like so. You're chasing yeah. after them. I'm chasing after them with my um, my two ceramic swords in their mm -hmm. sheaths across my back and in my plastic man armor. Okay, cool. Oh man, yeah. this is this is an epic. <laughs> it's like uh, someone has to play yakety sax here. Na -na 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 Patrick, your turn. Oh boy, that man didn't answer my question. No, nope. he's <laughs> running away from my friends who want to engage him. I yep. will run beside. Ow! <laughs> See if all your running pays off. What's your speed value? Nineteen. Okay, what okay, uh so you roll one d twenty and add four to it. Oh wait, three to it. Okay. <laughs> hey <laughs> you guys are all just chasing. Can I be uh right uh -huh. over mirror? <laughs> just right sure. next to Al. <laughs> sure, sure. It's up out. <laughs> well, sign in's not in this combat. He goes, ah, <laughs> that's, it. that's it. That's it for signing. Oh, uh, <laughs> why are we running after him? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Alicia, Bear and Alicia are going to do a joint action, and they're going to start chasing after them as well. They'll get this far, and Bear, uh, sorry, Alicia will yell to sign and to keep an eye on Mila. Ironically, the fastest person here who could catch up to him like that is asleep. Uh, Mila. So that's their actions. They're running to try chase and catch. Bear Bear's pretty fast though, so he gets actually a little bit faster than Alicia. So he's like probably gonna be behind Tom. This is once again just a generic representation of where our icons are in space, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Running Thug is still high tailing it. He's got no support. <laughs> he's got no homies. Spoiler alert, he's just making a run for it. So in fact, I'm not going to keep... Well, no, I'll move my head a little bit. Why not? Al? Um, first, just so you know, um, he's off the screen for me. Uh, uh, like, the screen doesn't go you past... Can't see. Yeah. Okay, well, then we're going to move everyone <laughs> back. Right, um, and um, As Al's precious monitor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You mean the chat's Al? precious monitor. Um, no, it, just, it, that's yeah, just a hard time. the yeah. end of the, the thing. Yeah, the end of yeah, the Yeah, there's a big weird. like gray space right over here. <laughs> no, yeah. like, like Al literally just for whatever reason. <laughs> um, Al's, and, actually, you go. Al's actually going to say this. He's going to say like uh, to Tom and Patrick, who's right next to him, stop him. I got to check on the person who's not moving. And then Al wants to move towards the shouts of he's not moving. <laughs> Gotcha. That's towards the man where he's running. Towards. It is. But, it no, is, he's going yeah. different, but he's going in a different trajectory. He's going towards the walls. Right. So, Al, what I can do is you can spend three actions. Okay. And you'll get to the entrance of Bright Little Star's Refuge. And you can look in. That'll okay? work. So we'll burn three actions for your for you to be able to do that. Okay. Sounds good. Tom. Okay. I want to make one more opposed roll. Okay. Get your plus one, sir. Okay. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Twelve. Tied to the defender. So, Son oh, this is what I'm going to do. No, 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 no. Hold up. I'm going to give you an option. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means you're you're pretty much right on him. All right. I'll let you yeah. spend a second action to try to since you're right on the guy. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do a second action. To do something to him, like tackle him or hit him or something like that. So I'm just going to force you to burn two actions if you want to actually do something to him. How clutched is the the medical equipment? Well, it's with three arms, so pretty clutched. Although right. there are some gaps, obviously. Um, I am going to try and tackle him, like quarterback tackle him, so that we land on the ground. Okay, so I would like you to roll the strike. Okay. Plus four, and this is an aim or a cold shot? No, no, it's just you're just trying to hit his general body, right? It's a tackle, so no worries. Okay, so it's just, it is including my strike, my melee to strike bonus? Melee to strike, yes. Okay. 23. He's going to try and dodge. 
Okay. So I'm going to burn you two actions. He's going to burn his last one. And attempt to dodge with his amazing plus two, and he fails. So um, you slam into him. All right, I'm going to have him roll another check, this time at a penalty. So I'm going to make it harder by that many. <laughs> well, super fails by two. <laughs> well. Good job. Excellent tackle, by the way, Tom. So Thank you slam into this scrawniest guy's body, um, hitting him. Actually, first you bash him against the wall, like the impact of it hits him against the wall and then down to the ground. And the items that he has clutched out just spread out in front of him, streaking against the grimy metal floor of this hallway. And you can now all see clearly that it is a collection of dried food and medical equipment that this individual had in their hands, okay? And you're still on top of him, by the way, at this point. And he gives out a surprised, balking cry as, you, as your body slams into his own, okay? Mm-hmm.